Good evening. I'm Vincent Pies, the spookiest ghost of a former actor the world has ever known. The idiot with the gaff tape on his sweater is my dear nephew, whom you know as Chef David. He asked me to preside over this, a very special Halloween episode of... Oh, cooking thing. Tonight, I shall regale you, fair audience, with the terrifying origin of the humble yet devilishly delicious brownie, and Chef David will show you how to make it yourself, if you dare. Making brownie starts with melting one stick of butter along with one quarter cup of chocolate chips, semi-sweet or my personal favorite, dark morsels. Stir them together. This melting of the butter is in honor of a humble village circa 1785, nestled, though unbeknownst to the meager townfolk, betwixt a coven of vampires, a brood of ghouls, and what is in the modern day known as Cleveland, Ohio. The village, known for its delicious and creamy melted butter, held an annual butter harvesting festival every year, where the village's canal would be scrubbed clean with the villagers' toothbrushes, which they didn't use for their teeth because personal hygiene wasn't really a thing back then. Then the first batch of freshly melted rich full-fat butter would run through the whole village via the canal. They would dip their lobster, toasted bread, or corn cobs, and have just a jolly good time. Thus was their tradition. But that was all about to change one fateful year. You see, on the eve of the butter harvesting festival in the dead of night, a seemingly harmless chocolate prank was performed by the three sons of the village's premier confectionist. That following morning, when the villagers went to tip that butter over and let it trickle down the canal, they were shocked to find it black as midnight on a moonless eve. Their screams echoed through the valley that would one day become Cleveland, and unbeknownst to the town folk, it would awaken their other neighbors. Now as to the brownies, you'll want to add one and a quarter cup of white sugar and mix it together thoroughly until you can no longer feel the granules of sugar. It will be as one. Upon realizing that the butter had been tainted, but that it was merely chocolate, the distraught villagers enlisted the help of the confectionist to salvage their Wonka-esque river. It was he who added the additional sugar to bind it together and balance the sweetness and the richness more. He added a little vanilla to bring out the chocolate's naturally sweet notes, and so too should you, and it seemed that all would be well in the peaceful village again. But then, in the middle of the night, the town awoke to a new grisly sight. All of the chickens in the entire area had been plucked clean and stolen. Only the little farmer boy, who had a spot of hay fever and awoke to hang out with the chickens, not realizing that this would only make the hay fever worse because again, hygiene and health in general weren't widely popular in this day and age, had seen what happened. He described a creature, tall yet hunched over, Gnarled teeth, greasy black hair, and beady eyes darting back and forth. The townsfolk quickly realized he was talking about Greg, the village conspiracy theorist. When they asked Greg what he saw, his message was dark and foreboding. That which is not will be once more. What has sunk below the hallowed earth will claw its way. This town shall never know peace so long as that river runs. But what does this have to do with the chickens, Greg? They asked. But it was too late. He was already gone. To honor the chickens and their noble sacrifice, we add two eggs to our brownie batter and mix it thoroughly. However, the chickens would not be the last to disappear from that town. Every night for the next three long nights, someone new would disappear. The farmer, whose flower would feed so many, was first, followed shortly by the confectionist's elder son, famed all around for his cocoa powder, and last, the confectionist himself. We honor these three by adding three quarters of a cup of flour, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, and chocolate chips to our brownie batter, then stir. While we preheat our oven to 350 Fahrenheit and let the brownie batter rest for 20 minutes, we shall finish our story. Though it's not too late to turn and run if you're too scared. The village, lost in a blind panic, finally had enough. They enlisted the help of legendary monster hunter Thaddeus Brown, who happened to be visiting since he was a major butter enthusiast. 
alongside the priest, the confectioner's younger two sons, and a few people who were totally expendable, Thaddeus Brown stalked the monster through the final night of the Melted Butter Festival. All of the expendable people were killed quickly, and one of the sons had been badly injured through his plot armor. Yet the beast remained elusive, picking them off only as they would wander away from the group, saying, we should split up and cover more ground, like Scooby-Doo fools. They had nearly given up, when out of the corner of his eye, down a dark and foreboding alley, Thaddeus Brown spotted two glowing eyes. The beast thundered down the alley, thump, 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 as it emerged in the pale moonlight. Thaddeus saw its hulking form for the very first time. It was what he had expected all along. It was a super ghoul empire, half ghoul, half vampire, all Cleveland. The beast roared and charged as Thaddeus Brown and those still alive in his party ran from the beast. It gave chase, but Thaddeus, oh, that now seems to be a good time to put those brownies in the oven for 25 minutes. Anyway. It gave chase, but Thaddeus was leading it right to a trap. He dove over a hidden pitfall which the beast could not have seen, such was its relentless lust for blood. It fell in and there, its fate was sealed. Blub, 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 much of the melted chocolate butter was poured into the pitfall. Enough that the monster couldn't stand on its own two feet, but that it couldn't reach the ledge to climb out. And as super ghoul empires can't swim, it was left to drown before baking in the early morning sun, thus killing the vampire part. Finally, the town was freed from the terrifying events that had unfolded. Except the vampires and ghouls still lived there. And eventually, they would found the city of Cleveland as revenge. In honor of the bravery of Thaddeus Brown and in the memory of those who had lost their lives to the ghoul empire, we enjoy the humble brownie, often with a dabble of iced cream. Mmm, delicious, ooey, gooey, brown. Is there a better dessert? I think not. Our time draws to a close. I hope you can sleep well tonight after that scary story. Though maybe you'll sleep better than ever. Thanks for watching A Cooking Thing. Like, comment, and subscribe for more, if you dare.